So the approval of acalabrutinib will certainly affect patients uh, in relapse disease. It will give patients the option of acalabrutinib in addition to um, ibrutinib. And we're soon to um, see actually the results of a direct comparison between the two of those. So depending on the results of that will uh, almost certainly influence prescribing. Um, I suppose it's made its, its probably its biggest impact in the frontline clinical trial setting. Uh, sorry, in the frontline setting. Up until now, patients have only been able to receive BTK inhibitors, namely primarily ibrutinib, um, either in the context of frontline clinical trials or in patients who have p53 deletion or mutation. It's only really been reimbursed in that setting. So this enables uh, patients to receive a non-chemotherapy based approach. Um, a well-tolerated oral tablet um, with a very manageable side effect profile um, in the frontline clinical trial setting. And it's, it's the follow-up of the clinical trials fairly short at the moment, but it's highly likely from what we know about other BTK inhibitors and both in frontline and relapse that, that the duration of responses will be long and patients may receive really very durable benefit from this treatment in the frontline setting. So yes, from a, from a clinician's patient and patient point of view, it's, it's, it's great to have another really good option in the frontline setting. We've also had the recent approval of venetoclax alongside abinutuzumab, which is fixed duration therapy. And that also provides a really good option for, 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 for patients actually across all, all ages at the moment. So basically we have options of non-chemotherapy based um, approaches in the frontline and relapse setting in CLL, which is uh, really a great step forward um, for the management of this disease.